What is going on, y'all? It's your boy Ethan coming to you guys live from this video. Hope everything's blessed on the other side of the world. Energy with Ethan today, man. I hope you guys are wavy, positive, super bright, you know what I'm saying, and uh, wide awake. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about my experience working in a big box gym, right? So, um, I'm not going to name the label of the gym, but I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what I experienced, what I had to go through, um, not go through, but what I had to learn, and uh, what I experienced while working in that environment. If you're a beginning trainer, personal trainer, fitness enthusiast, one of your biggest dreams is to work as a trainer, you know, and, and be self-sufficient and make an income as a trainer and as a professional, as a fitness professional. I got that opportunity with this company and, and, and all by be it, I got to learn and meet a lot of different personalities. Now, a lot of the time this might make sense to some, might not make sense to others, but majority of gyms are predominantly uh, male dominated, right? Especially the gym that I was in. I was in a sector in Scarborough. Welcome to, or shout out to all my people in Toronto. And um, I got to, I got to kind of notice, you know, the culture, you know, I'm, I grew up in Scarborough for me, it's nothing new. But um, for the people around the world that don't know what Scarborough is like, Scarborough is kind of like the hood, kind of like the grime part of Toronto, right? Where, you know, where a culture really is key. You know, it's beautiful to be from here. Um, there's a lot of hardship, a lot of tough neighborhoods, you know, a lot of crime if you're going to the wrong area, but a lot of love too, because your people here, you know, they grow from love, they grow from hardship, you know, and I got nothing but love from the, this part of the city that I grew up in. That being said, you know, I got to learn a little bit about, um, you know, what how what and how something worked i want to talk to y'all a little bit about morality and character you know and the reason why i'm so big on it now you know you could look at my earrings or you might look at my chain you might look at the the fashion style that i might have or the way that i uh per persuade my message at the end of the day guys the one thing about me is that i do things as righteous as possible right now what does that mean that means that i'm not cutting corners that i'm doing things as honest as possible and when you ask me a question i'm going to give you an honest answer now i know a lot of people in this world don't work that way right i know a lot of people are a little shady a little twisty a little slimy people like to finesse right and that's cool you know i'm off i'm all for finessing you know that's the name of the game with selling but um how far does it go you know i'm going to talk to you guys about somebody that i met at this company that really changed my perspective on how i see the business and the industry now i think a lot of people know sex sells right so you put a pretty girl in front of a gym in front of all these guys and what are you going to do you're going to get attention right and you're going to get people's focus and you put these girls in tight clothes and yoga pants and the next thing you know there's a lot of attention right I was on a team full of women at this gym that I was working at. And um, regardless of what I thought of them, um, repulsed, uh, you know, and the day they were making their money, right? And and so was I. The only difference was, was when I was speaking with people, interacting with people and, and making my sales, I was doing things in a genuine perspective. I was connecting with the person in front of me. I was giving people a resolve. I was trying to help people find answers, whereas, Girl, the girls that I was working with really had a different style to how they were kind of doing what they were doing. A lot of schmoozing, a lot of flirting, a lot of sexual tension, a lot of banter, a lot of unrelated rapport with business, a lot of charming, right? Now, if a man were to do this, um, he would be immediately called out and he would be ostracized and he would be reported on, right? But a cute girl doing this, it's completely fine, right? Now, I think things and tensions were starting to arise because my numbers were doing really good with the company. And um, I was starting to lose respect for the people around me. So I stopped trying with work. And I think that's a mistake that I made at the end of the day. I stopped really putting my step forward. Um, that being said, there is no excuse for the culture that was brought up there that wasn't acknowledged, right? Management didn't uh, check the morality of their employees. They didn't care about how they made their sales. They just made their sales. So even though I was putting my every foot and step in and closing deals the right way, there was girls that were on my team that were just being shysty and not really talking about how to cancel a contract or uh, talking about how they had to seduce somebody to get the job to even be employed here. Now, what's my point of the story, guys? There's two roads that you can walk in life, right? The easy way or the hard way, right? And 
you can go out and go and try to get strippers to model for your company you can get hot girls to model your brand or you can do things the hard way right which is you developing a skill i'm grateful for this company because they allow me to develop my skills as a salesman right and my skills as a closer and i've proven that with the numbers that i have regardless the reason why i left and decided to not put effort into the role no more seeking different options was because i couldn't sit and stand every single day working with individuals that had no morality that were okay selling themselves for a paycheck now, this goes deep. This goes into the stuff that you smoke, the stuff that you drink, how you interact with your members, how you interact with clients. Now, I made my mistake too, right? Don't get me wrong. When I was invited to go out to drink or smoke, I made that mistake, right? Um, and I learned that lesson. But the beauty in it is the work stayed the same for me. The training stayed the same for me. The vision stayed the same for me. My purpose stayed the same for me in terms of the role. Right? Even if the role isn't existent anymore, which I really don't care about, I'm happy that I don't, get, I don't have to be a part of that culture no more. So why am I making this video? Now at this age, guys, I want y'all to know how I function and how I move and how I handle my business and my sales and everything that I do, and it's righteously. I don't wanna get a dollar if I have to cheat for it. I don't wanna have to lie to somebody. I don't have to trick nobody. I don't have to finesse nobody. I do things the right way. And this is how I do business, righteously, honorably, righteously, with honesty, with integrity. And if I can't get it the right way, I don't want it at all. Plain and simple. Whether it's sales, fitness, business, money, anything. So I want to leave y'all with this. You got two roads, you know? One's going to help you become a super, super, superstar celebrity, but at the end of the day, you have to sell your soul. And what I mean by sell your soul, that means sell your morality, sell your body out, sell your conviction out, put your family on blast, um, smoke and drink and give destroy yourself, but hey, you're promised that success. Or you want to go the hard route, which is you're going to be ostracized, you're going to be uh, put alone, right? People are going to avoid you, right? And you're going to have a hard time at work and eventually they might cut you just because of one or two wrong things that you were doing. Meanwhile, everyone is doing the same thing, right? For me, I'm choosing option B every single time. I'd rather be cut out and know that I did my thing the right way. I didn't flirt with my clients. I didn't flirt with my members. I did everything the right way. People came to me because they genuinely wanted to transform their life and fitness. And that's what I do. I transform lives, my own life and the lives of others. And that's what I'm going to continue to do in my business the right way. So I want to leave you out with that. Just a story time for young trainers that are going into a big box gym. Just remember that you might see things that uh, are morally right or morally wrong. Right? But at the end of the day, it's how you hold your business up at the end of the day. As long as you fight that fight cleanly, even though everyone else around you might be doing dirt, is how you're going to hold up in that industry. Now, again, one more thing, disclaimer. I don't want to even, I'm exposing myself. I don't want to pretend like I didn't, I, I was like the perfect angel. I made a lot of mistakes in that company and I deserve the, the decision that was made. But all I am saying is there's more to meet the eye than just a story, right? Um, in a team full of women, I was closing numbers as high as the director, right? And this is without, um, without assistance. This is without uh, support. This is without going to a different club and learning how to sell it and being amazing there and then coming back. This is staying in one club and trying to make that club sufficient. So a lot of people are going to down talk the story. But at the end of the day, I did things that most people could not do. And I don't think people will do at that club. Now, I will talk a little bit about the structure of that club, but this is just education for young male trainers and young female trainers on the morality of the game and what really matters. Now, I know the fitness industry is a very grimy industry, but hopefully we can start a movement where people are achieving and talking about authentic success, right? Naturals, right? With that, guys, that's it. Stay hungry, stay clean, stay vigilant, and I'm out.